In this tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how you can create your own repeatable pattern tiles using Inkscape's pattern editor. And the example I'll be working with in this demonstration is this overlapping circles pattern. So let me get rid of this and we will get started. So the first thing I want to do is set up a grid. So I'll come up to the file menu and I will select document properties. And from the document properties menu, I'm going to select grids and I'm going to apply a new rectangular grid. And I want to space out these lines so that they're 100 pixels apart. So I'm going to change the spacing X and the spacing Y to 100. And once you do that, you can close out of that menu. And now I want to turn on snapping. So I'll come up here to the snapping menu and I'll click on that to enable that. I want to make sure I'm snapping to my grids when I draw my shapes. And now I'll grab these circles and ellipses tool and I'm going to snap the cursor to an intersecting area of two grid lines and click and drag and then hold control and shift while I do that so that it creates the circle from the inside out. And I'm going to snap to the next grid line just like that. So now I will remove the fill color by clicking on the red X down here and I will apply a black stroke by holding shift and clicking on the black swatch. And now I want to adjust this further so I'm going to double click I'm going to double click the uh, stroke stripe down here to open that menu and I'll come over here to the stroke style menu and I want to change the stroke width to 50 pixels. So I'll type in five zero. Make sure you have pixels as your unit of measurement. And once that's done, let me come back over here to my selection tool. I want to come up here to the menu and make sure I have this option disabled where it says when scaling objects scale the stroke width by the same proportion. It's important that you have that disabled for what we're about to do next. So once that's done, Right click the object, go to duplicate, hold control and shift and scale it out to the next grid line like that. And then when you release it, the stroke size will update so that it's consistent with the other object. And now I'm going to repeat that three more times so that I have five circles in total. So I will, instead of right clicking it, I'll press control D or command D and hold control and shift and scale it out. And we're going to create two more. So I'm going to control D, scale this one out. And then one more control D and holding control and shift while I scale. And there we go. That's the result we're going for right there. So now I'll zoom out a little bit. I'll select everything and I'm going to convert these to paths. So I'll go to uh, path and I will select stroke to path. And then I'll unify them together by going to path and selecting union. So now I just want to cut off a quadrant of this circle here. So to do that, I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm going to snap to the center grid line and click and drag out like that until the rectangle is going outside of the circles. And then we have that effect right there. So I'm going to grab my selection tool, select all of this, and we will go to path and select intersection. And this is the result we're going for right here. We want this one quadrant to work with. And once we have that, I'm going to right click this, go to duplicate. I will flip it vertically and I'm just going to snap it down here. And I'll duplicate this one again, right click, duplicate. I'll flip this one horizontally and then move it over here. And then I'll duplicate this again. I'll right click, duplicate, bring this one down here. And I want to snap this one like that so that we have the beginning of what looks like a letter S. And then I'll take this object here and I'll duplicate this one and I will place this one over here where I make sure I'll use this as a reference point right here. I make sure I snap to those corners. And once that's done, we can get rid of these other shapes. So I'm going to click on them to select them and then press the delete key. And what we want is these two shapes right here. And once we have those two, we can select them, go into the shape builder tool. And now I'm going to draw the shape that I want. So I'm going to click on these to highlight them blue. And I'm going to draw a line through this area to uh, connect this all together. I want this arc coming down here like this. And I want to add these endpoints to them. Once we have that result, I'll go back to the selection tool. And now I want to unify this together. So I will go to path and I will select union. And now I'm going to duplicate this. So let's right click and go to duplicate. I'm going to move this one over here and I'm going to rotate this one clockwise. So I'm going to click on it again to get the rotation handles. I'll hold my control key and I'll rotate it clockwise. And now we're going to do the same thing with these two. I'm going to select these, go to duplicate. And I'm going to rotate this one around clockwise as well. I'll rotate this around while holding the control key. And then I'll snap these to the bottom of the other ones. And this right here represents our pattern tile. So I'm going to select all of this. I'm going to unify it together by going to path union. And we now have a single pattern tile that we can work with. 
Uh, let me zoom out a little bit. I'm gonna turn off snapping now. We don't need that anymore. And I'm gonna make the grid lines invisible. I'll go up to where it says view and I will select page grid. I'll disable it there. And I'm just gonna scale this down a bit. Let me press one of the keyboards so I'm zoomed out to 100%. And I'm just gonna scale this down while holding control. Now it's important if you want your pattern to be a certain color, you're gonna to wanna to make it that color now before we convert this to a pattern object. So uh, I'm gonna make this a dark blue. So I'm gonna come down here to my color palette and look for a blue swatch to use. I think that looks good right there. And once you're happy with the color, with the object selected, you can come up here to the objects menu, go to pattern and select objects to pattern. And now you have that object as a pattern to use as a fill property. So let me grab a rectangle, let me grab the rectangle tool and create a rectangle to show you what I mean. Uh, I'm gonna hold shift and click on this red X down here to get rid of that stroke. And I'll make this a different color. I'm gonna make this be the background of the pattern. So I'm gonna create two objects actually. Uh, I'll make this one a light shade of yellow. And then I'm gonna right click this object and go to duplicate. And I will fill this object with the pattern. So I'll come over here to the fill tab. And instead of using a solid fill color, I'm gonna come over here and choose pattern. And now pattern fill, you should see our custom pattern fill right up top up there and you can choose that. And now the object is filled with that pattern. And if you wanna change the density of that pattern, the size or the scale or the rotation, you can use these settings in the pattern menu. Or what I like to do is I like to just click on this button that says edit on canvas and then you have these editable handles here. So I could take this and scale this down. Uh, and if you, if you hold your control key, you can lock the aspect ratio and we can make this really small or we can make it really big. And if you want to rotate it around, you can rotate it around with this handle here. Or if you want to move the location of it, you can use the top left handle to move the position of it like that. So I'm going to scale that down a little bit. And there you go. That's how you can create a repeatable pattern tile using Inkscape. If you found this lesson useful, then consider checking out my Inkscape Masterclass. It's a collection of over 60 videos where I go over all of the tools and features in Inkscape and I explain what they are and demonstrate how they work. Kind of like how I did in this video. We even have a private community where you can ask questions and get help from me anytime you want. And best of all, there's no monthly membership fees. You just pay $17 one time and you're in for life. I'll have some information about that down below if you want to check that out. As always, thanks for watching.